Welcome back. And you are still on to Cosmopolitan Market on your channel of choice, the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. And like I said at the beginning of the program, we have seen Bitcoin prices attain a fresh record today, breaking through $63,000 this morning and then managing to retain most of its latest gains. And after rising to this latest highs, the question is, where will the cryptocurrency go next? And joining me now is Samuel Adiola, who is the business strategist and blockchain enthusiast. Thank you for joining me, Mr. Diola. Uh, the pleasure is on my end. Thank you for having me this morning. Thank you again. And starting off, um, in the past 24 hours, we have seen the flagship cryptocurrency talking about Bitcoin traders higher $63,000, adding over 5% during the last few days. What do you think is the primary driver of this rise? Um, okay, you know... Um, in the it's currently yeah um being that a lot of persons seem to lose interest in, in the uh, in the fiat currency and which means that the cryptocurrency space is gaining more adoption right and there is a lot of trust happening in the and take for example uh um, of america is rolling out checks right stimulus checks to its citizens and all that mm -hmm. and reports have, have it that it are converting these checks in, into. So if you take a closer look at the on-chain analysis in the cryptocurrency space also, we've seen increase in the number of in, in this, which means that new people are beginning to get into what the, the crypto is. And, and that's why you see that the same price is um, Mr. Adela, just like you have stated, we are seeing people start to accept uh, cryptocurrency. And um, we've seen Bitcoin also solidify its role as the digital gold investor's portfolio. Um, but how, why, or what do you think is the, the factor behind the rise with people getting more comfortable with uh, cryptocurrency investment? What would you say is the drive behind the comfort over the years? Because I reckon in, back in the year uh, 2012, when crypto started, not too many people were, were very interested, but that seems to have changed in recent times. What would you say is the reason for the change? Okay, you know, an average does not want to think for himself. Let's look for a higher authority before making a decision. Now, if you look at what is going on in the crypto, especially Bitcoin, all right? Now, uh, ask, who, who owns Tesla? recently made a pronouncement that you can purchase a Tesla Model X ex Bitcoin and they are not going to sell off this Bitcoin what if they are going to hold this Bitcoin for a very long time so that already uh, put, it, put everybody's confidence all right increases confidence on crypto all right and a lot of persons don't want what is going on right now is called fear of missing out people don't want to mm. miss out so they are buying into it and of course, as it's, I would say it, it's a, and of course the bubble is about to bust. Mm. But you, you said the reason is largely due to the fact that people are scared to miss out. Is that good enough reason at this time uh, for, for a person to, to put their monies in cryptocurrency? Is that good enough reason? Okay, as, um, as a trader and as a coach, I always advise people in business when you have assets, especially in the cryptocurrency space that has, you should not buy the all time high. When a coin is at its all time high, it's the very, very uh, poor, poor time to go, to go into the market. We will be taking a short break, and when we come back, our discussions on cryptocurrency and the surge in Bitcoin will continue. Don't go nowhere.
Welcome back again. And you are still on to Cosmopolitan Market on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. And just before the break, I had been discussing with my guest, who is Samuel Adiola, and he is a business strategist and blockchain enthusiast. And we're talking about the surge in the price of Bitcoin that we have seen over the past 24 hours. As I, as I speak right now, Bitcoin is trading as high as $63,000 uh, right now. And hello, Mr. Samuel. Are you still there? Okay, thank you again for joining us on the program. And I reckon that just before we went on the break, we were talking about the reason behind um, the, 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 the increased confidence with regards to cryptocurrency that we are seeing in recent times. And you said uh, something about uh, people not wanting to be left behind. Is that enough reason for one to invest in cryptocurrency? Okay, thank you. That's actually not uh, enough reason. And it's not even a uh, wise financial advice that anybody who gets into Bitcoin right now, except you're one of the people I call the whale, all right, or the shark in the financial market, uh, and you're ready to hold Bitcoin for the next one year, two years, five years, and again. But if you're a retail trader or you're somebody who doesn't want to make a little profit from the market currently, the cryptocurrency uh, market focusing on Bitcoin is not what you should be looking at. You should be looking at other alternatives instead of what Bitcoin. Now, the shock in the in the financial space in the financial industry are currently not yet uh, playing in the Bitcoin space in the uh, I'll say a hundred percent. Now, why do I say that? Some people think the cryptocurrency market, looking at the market capitalization, is too too low for them to play in. Why? The forex market average over seven trillion on a daily basis. Right, in a matter of capitalization, while cryptocurrency is still struggling at uh, about 1.6 trillion to 2 trillion dollars daily, right? Which is still this amount is still too low for that. But as soon as the cryptocurrency market capitalization rises to about 3 trillion to 5 trillion, then we should see the shark play in here. So now there is a huge speculation that Bitcoin is different to a hundred thousand dollars per coin. So if you're somebody who is ready to take a risk, which don't take whatever it is I'm telling you here as a financial advice, all right? But if you're somebody who wants to take a risk, then you can as well uh, just take Bitcoin and hold it for the next five years because it's expected to just be a hundred thousand dollars. Um, Mr. Samuel, not everyone will agree with you as many people argue that uh, with Bitcoin there is some sort of hedge you know, against inflation. And we've also seen companies such as Tesla, MasterCard, PayPal and the rest uh, um, who have seen to, seem to have accept, accepted a cryptocurrency. Do you still share the same sentiment saying that a cryptocurrency um, just is not or might not be the best for sort of investment uh, currently? Okay, our cryptocurrency as it stands, all right, is still at the early stage. And it's yet to be adopted by the way and by the big guys in the financial market. Now, in 2014, we saw Microsoft accepting um, a Bitcoin payment for the purchase of Xbox, all right. Currently, a lot of people are accepting and spreading wrong news for news about Amazon accepting Bitcoin. Amazon does not accept Bitcoin yet. The only thing you do is this. You can actually get a platform, you can purchase Amazon Pay, uh, Amazon Keep gift card, I beg your pardon, with it, and come back to Amazon to spend your gift card. And the same thing, you can do that with Walmart. Among all the top companies in the world, there are only 11 of them that currently accept Bitcoin as a means of payment, including TSC in Canada. Right? So we've not seen a high mass adoption or acceptance for Bitcoin or cryptocurrency as a means of payment. Mm -hmm. So it's still at the preliminary stage, which is the end stage right now. And that's why the market capitalization is still low. Okay? So what, what, I, what I know and I understand in the financial market is that the cryptocurrency space is a place filled with a high level of risk. Why? Because it's not yet a legal tender. Right, mm -hmm. and that is why a lot of people will still shy away from it. You understand? Exactly. So as the market capitalization increases, we we'll see whales coming into the market, and that means 
the level of confidence will begin to what, increase. But as long as the whales are not coming into the market for now, all right, we wouldn't see that massive breakout that everybody are expecting. Okay, Mr. Adiola, let's speak. Let's speak on. Let's speak a bit on the the increase in. Uh, according to statistics, we're seeing that over sixty percent of central banks are currently exploring uh, central bank digital currency. What exactly are your thoughts regarding that? Is it something that you you expect to see um, some African countries also tilt towards? Definitely. If, if the government want to really be transparent and be and be honest to its people, then it should look at technologies that take away uh, manipulation, which the blockchain technology is the one technology that actually solves that problem. I had a private meeting with some person about um, two days ago, and I had a conversation with them concerning the blockchain. I said, cryptocurrency is just one out of so many uses of the blockchain technology, all right, which um, if uh, uh, the central bank authorities of different countries are right, uh, looking at the blockchain as a means of uh, actually uh, how do I call it now, providing a transparent means of transaction for their customers or for their citizens, then definitely people's confidence will be boosted because blockchain technology is a technology that cannot be manipulated by anybody. Right? It, it, um, it simply a decentralized protocol, contrary to our centralized banking system, which can easily be manipulated by some two players. Mm. So in Africa, we decide that we, we want to be transparent to our people, we want our people to believe in our government and what we do, then they should take a very, very close look at what adopting blockchain technology in everything, in every sector, not just the financial sector. And some months ago, we saw some restrictions come from the front of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And some Nigerians are saying uh, that isn't there a way for the CBN and the people to meet halfway out, except um, draw or ruling out an outright uh, ban in transactions with regards to cryptocurrency? What do you advise at this point? What can be done? What, what middle ground can be reached between the CBN and uh, cryptocurrency users in Nigeria? I remember coming on the um, on CBN during that um, uh, memo that was released by CBN. All right. Um, one thing I need everybody to understand is this. the CBN outside simply made a reminder to the commercial bank about their role. All right. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin also is not a deduction that at least in Nigeria. So the commercial bank shouldn't be providing channels through which cryptocurrency can be converted into Naira directly paid into what Nigeria's bank account. So they are simply doing what they ought to do, they're playing their role basically. Alright? That's what that's what is going on. And if you if you look at uh, the blockchain technology very, very well, one of the things that makes the the Bitcoin massive adoption, alright, going up is that it is peer to peer system. Which mm -hmm. don't need any financial institution to be in between the space uh, and to act as middleman in the transaction, basically. Mm -hmm. Right? So, if a lot of persons want to move funds out or bring them money into their uh, portfolio, basically, they don't need any, uh, any intermediary. They simply open between what? Both parties, let the party A and party B. So, for example, if you need this one, for example, you don't need to go to any bank to buy it. If I have Bitcoin, all you can do is contact me. I sell my Bitcoin to you. You buy it, all right? And you feel it in here with my one account. I don't need a financial institution to carry out what you can do. Okay? So, um, I also believe that also that there is no cost for a lot because the big end of the business, the broken technology is taking a way the financial institution and uh, still talking about cryptocurrencies uh, just recently we saw coinbase coinbase is a cryptocurrency and it has it is now on um, 
it has debuted on on, NAS, on Nasdaq, and Coins, Coinbase's um, IPO is the first of its kind for a major cryptocurrency company. What effects do you expect this to have? on cryptocurrencies worldwide. Some analysts say that these may herald the beginning of a blockchain boom. Do you share the same opinion? I share the same opinion concerning Coinbase. Let me tell you that Coinbase is not just a cryptocurrency company. Coinbase is a technology company that provides solutions in the technology space. All right. So they are thought to be listed on NASA and also being traded on some exchange platforms, right? We will go a long way in boosting investors' confidence in the company. And I was having a conversation with somebody earlier today, and the person simply said, We all need to put uh, our attention on Coinbase currently because we see a massive growth in about uh, almost 60% in a particular company that does the same thing that Coinbase is doing currently. So there is a huge speculation that Coinbase is. Uh, the stock of funding that our funding stock is going to work right about 60 percent, bring into work almost 500 percent in the next future. Okay, and still talking about investors and enhancing in investment, uh, how would you say blockchain and cryptocurrency? Um, in what specific ways would cryptocurrency rev revolutionize uh, how business transactions are run in the 21st century? Okay. One problem in the financial sector is movement of money. You and I know that if you want to transfer funds, our commercial banks always place restrictions. We have a certain volume that we cannot transfer. For example, I have a limit on my bank account up to 5 million naira for daily transaction. Now, if I want to make any purchase above 5 million naira, that means I cannot use my mobile application to do that. I will probably need to walk into the bank to carry out such a transaction. All right, but the cryptocurrency solves this problem. All right, and you don't get to pay the high charges on transaction. That's the steel fee. You don't get to pay all that. All right, there are few fees in transacting in crypto coins, but if you see what let me even compare to what the financial banks are charging for the financial banks. Okay, mm. so that, that's why I, I, I realize that the cryptocurrency are coming to pay. All of the government can simply do right now is to reposition this for job to clean out the handfuls out of the gate for people. So that's what's going to use the government to make the carry out the government for people to do this right now. But people are sitting uh, under the habit of not an option for any government or any country. Because we only have been known to be today is anything that you and I place a value on and the people have decided to place a value on digital assets. Mm. And just before before we go, Mr. Diola, I'd like to know your thoughts. Most people are of the opinion that crypto may just be the currency of the future. Do you share in the same or in this sentiment? What are your thoughts? I thought about that it, 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 it sentimentally. I'm, I'm being sentimental here, yeah, all right? Why? Because I go straight back into the history of money. Mm. And I realize that money is anything, just like I said earlier on, that you and I decide to place value on. All right? And if there is a means of transaction that there is no organization or any central authority that places restriction on how we transact basically, you and I would definitely want to use that means of transaction often. Okay, so that's why I'm seeing cryptocurrency as the what, as the currency of the future, basically. Maybe not necessarily this one being uh, our regular means of transaction, but it, it, it has opened the way for other cryptocurrencies to come and play in the space. Because now, if you want to transact in Bitcoin, for example, um, there's a certain uh, confirmation, about six confirmations that takes place on the network. So if these confirmations are not done, whomever you are buying this product from will not release the product. I have made a transaction before, and it took about six hours before the time was, 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 was to do that. So that is a longer time. But there are other cryptocurrency options that are used to make payments, and payments will have that they have less than this person, or even the vice president, will have a point in the world. So if the current of screen is being sold by blockchain and other cryptocurrency assets, then we should introduce the cryptocurrency and the currency of the future.
Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Samuel Adiola, for joining us on the program. Thank you. I have been speaking with Mr. Samuel Adiola on the surge in the price of Bitcoin. And just in the past 24 hours, we've seen Bitcoin surge as high as $63,000. And uh, we've also seen Bitcoin retain these prices. And that is very interesting, I must say. However, he's of the opinion that Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency as a whole, just might be the future currency. This is the point where we wrap up today's episode of Cosmopolitan Market on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. But we shall be back again tomorrow bright and early as always to keep you updated on happenings in the world of business, commerce, finance, as well as investment. I am Chi Amaka Enendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.